UCLA under the guidance of Dr. Miami Prince, whose lab focuses on traumatic brain injury. As a result, the title of my presentation is The Function of Female Sex Hormones in Glucose Metabolism Following Traumatic Brain Injury. So as some of you may know, optimum brain function requires a vast amount of energy in order to function optimally, and this is increased following traumatic brain injury. Researchers have now found that glucose, which is the main energy source in the body, is detoured from entering the mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cell, and is detoured down the pentose phosphate pathway for DNA and membrane repair. This is, of course, important following traumatic brain injury, but as a result, there is a decrease in glucose or energy production. Studies also show that cerebral function differs greatly between females and males. Female brains have been shown to have better control of oxidative stress, as well as greater mitochondrial protein content, and we believe that this is due to the female sex hormone, specifically estrogen, as well as uncoupling proteins, or UCPs, which are proteins found in the mitochondria that increase rates of glucose production. And as you can see in figure two, the UCP proteins in females are much greater than the UCPs in the males. So, in the female brain, glucose processing is consistently regulated by estrogen, and this has been found to increase glucose transport into the brain, as well as increases the activity of glycolytic enzymes. And as you can see in figure three, Estrogen works at the specific spots during the glycolysis cycle, which is the first stage of energy production, and it specifically works at the enzyme hexokinase, phosphofructinase, and pyruvate kinase. So, ketone bodies. In ketogenesis, body, the body breaks down fat to promote energy production, and this turns into ketone bodies. Ketone body metabolism in humans has been shown to leverage, be leveraged as fuel when glucose is unavailable due to episodic periods. These episodic periods can include a traumatic brain injury. Recent studies also highlight how ketone bodies play an imperative role in mammalian cell metabolism, homeostasis, and other physiological states. Most of you know about the keto diet and sometimes used as a weight loss tool as well. So, researchers in my lab have previously discovered that ketone bodies have had positive effects in male rats following traumatic brain injury. It increases the mitochondrial respiration rates. But now, as we can see, that females and males are immensely different, and we want to see if it has the same positive effects in the females as it did the males. Thus, the study aimed to dissect the relationship between female sex hormones, glucose metabolism, as well as traumatic brain injury, along with the ketone body effect. And we hypothesized that the female rats receiving the ketone body infusion would have the higher mitochondrial respiratory rates than those not receiving the treatment. So the study was a two by two by two by two vectorial design based on the multiple independent variables involved in the study. These include the different sexes, the stage of esters, which is the menstrual cycle, the type of injury, and the type of treatment. The subjects were 10 adolescent female and male sprite dolly rats and they were given either a sham surgery or a controlled cortical impact or CCI injury, and they were randomized to then either a saline or a beta-hydroxyburate BHB infusion, which is the ketone body of choice. And this is just a little experimental time to show how we planned out as the experimental design, which we'll go into further depth as the presentation goes along. So one day before the experiments took place, the female rats were screened for their stage of esters using a vaginal impedance meter. A score of three or higher signified that the rats were in proesters. <laughs> the rats were then anesthetized and the femoral vein was for femoral cannulation for future infusion. And then a craniotomy was performed to make way for the implementation of the control cortical impact or CCI injury. And figure four just shows us what the mechanism really looks like. It's done by using a pneumatic piston cylinder that can be set to mimic what a mildly severe traumatic brain injury would look like in an adolescent teenager. The rats then received either the saline or the BHB infusion for three hours and were grouped in the following categories, with the sham group having no injury and, no, and the saline infusion the CCI group having the injury with a saline infusion, and the CCI and BHB group with the injury and the BHB infusion. Following the um, cannulation, the epsilateral cortical area of interest was collected for mitochondrial isolation, and following the isolation, the Clark electrode protocol was used to measure mitochondrial respiration. 
respiration, and we did this by looking at the respiratory control ratio, or the RCR. So the RCR is the mechanism that we use to measure the mitochondrial respiration rates in the rats. The RCR is equal to the stage three respiration divided by the stage four respiration. Stage three respiration looks at mitochondrial consumption of oxygen, while stage four respiration looks at proton leakage. An RCR of eight or higher denoted that the rats had a strong respiration rate. So, the sex differences in metabolic response to TBI. When it comes to the injury, you would see in figure A that in stage three respiration, the males had impairments in this, which meant that they had impairments in mitochondrial consumption of oxygen. The females had a greater stage four respiration, denoting that they had proton leakage. But overall, you can see that the injured female rats still had a greater RCR than the male rats. Then when we looked at the recovery profile of both males and females, Researchers have found previously that patients typically go through a depressive state 24 hours post-injury, and over a period of seven days, they slowly begin to increase when it comes to their mitochondrial respiration rates, and by day 10, you would see that they slowly begin to stabilize when it comes to the rate of mitochondrial respiration, and this just goes to show that they follow the normal trend, both females and males. Finally, when it came to the metabolic response to the beta hydroxybutyrate infusion, you will see that in E, this time the females had impairments in state three respiration. The males had an increase in state four respiration, but overall the female group with the BHB infusion had the greatest RCR out of all injured animals involved in the study. So what does this tell us? The consolidation of this data the consolidation of this data supports current literature's findings on the positive effects of ketone bodies in glucose metabolism. Though the injured female rats did not have as high of a respiration rate as the sham group, they did, however, have the highest RCR out of all injured animals involved in the study. Therefore, our hypothesis was supported, seeing that the ketone bodies did have a positive effect on the mitochondrial respiration rates of the females. And these results also lend support to previous knowledge of the estrous cycle and BHB infusions having some effect on mitochondrial respiration. Future works would include comparing the rats in their different stages of estrus, which we set out to do, but due to time constraints, we weren't able to do this. But this would show us the specific role of estrogen or the estrous cycle in mitochondrial, the recovery profile of these female rats. Understanding these factors can also tackle the controversy behind TBI, the effects of TBI being left untreated and undiagnosed, and also allows for exploration of sex hormones and ketone bodies in the treatment and diagnosis of dramatic brain injury patients. I would like to thank Ascend and Morgan State University for their consistent support. Also, acknowledgments to the staff at UCLA and the UCLA HBCU Neuroscience Pathways Program. And thank you for listening to my presentation. Questions?